In this video, we're going to put together the data structure of the array and the control structure of the loop and represent this idea of the processing of a dynamic length piece of data. I created a new copy of the starter code in order to demonstrate my loop and array combination. I'm going to put this in the mean function and I'm going to begin by copying the letter array. Now I'm going to write my loop. And inside my loop, I know I need to alter the value of my counter. And so now I need a condition for my loop. So I want this loop to run once for every letter. And that means I want to run it 26 times. So for now, I'm just going to write that condition in directly. And then inside the console log, I'm going to console log the value. Let's save this and see it in the browser. When I hit the submit button, I should see one console log for every letter in the array. So my console logs start at 0, and they go all the way up to 25. So right now, the only thing that matches between this array and this loop is the number 26 here. And this is the number of items in the array, the number of elements. The other thing to notice here is that the range of values that's being output corresponds with the locations the indexes of the array. So the array starts at 0 and it goes to 25. So let's make some changes to the code to make this relationship more obvious. Now I'm going to write a console that outputs the values inside the array. And I already said that the value of the counter is equivalent to the location in the array, which means that If I want to access the values in the array, I can use counter. And this stands in for each value inside the letters array. Let's hit the submit button and see what happens. So I get a letter value for each iteration of the loop, and this counter value is standing in for the location. So it's every location in the array. And here I am referencing the value at that location in the array. So that would be equivalent to me writing square bracket syntax and directly putting in the number uh, right over here. We made this connection between the array index and the loop counter. So the integer of the counter can stand in to access a location inside the array. Our loop and our array are connected in two places. One is where the loop accesses the array values using the counter integer. And then the other is this number 26 here, which is telling the loop how many times to run. Unfortunately, this loop doesn't know how to run on an array that's any other number besides 26. It can only run on an array that's 26 items long. And so the next change we're going to make is for this loop to be able to run on an array that's any uh, length long. And so first, I'm going to change this program around so that every time the main function runs, we put something new inside an array. I'm going to move the letters array outside of the main function and make it a global value. And I'm going to uh, have it start empty. And 
when the main function runs, I'm going to put a new value into the letters array. I'm going to comment out my loop for now, and I'm going to output all the values inside of the letters array. Let's see this in the browser. Now whatever value I type in the input should go into the array. Now I'm going to uncomment the loop. The question is, how do I write a loop that runs over an array, no matter how big or small the array is? For the letters array that had 26 letters in it, then this number was fine. But how do I know how many times to run the array? Because the length of the array is constantly changing whenever the main function runs. The answer is that there's a way that I can get the array to tell me what length it currently is, and I can use that to tell the loop how many times to run. So that is uh, dot length after the letter's variable name. And this is going to be a number that is the size of the array. And I can use this in place of this number 26. Now this loop will run as many times as there are locations in the array or items in the array. Now every time I type something in the input box and click submit, I'm putting something in the array. And every time I click the submit, then I'm also visiting every item in the array. So we should see that in the console log. So I've added one thing to the array. And I'm going to add a second thing. And now uh, we get two sets of console logs. And then now I'm going to add a third thing. And I'm going to clear this. And we should see three sets of console logs. And I'm going to clear this. And now there should be four things in the array. And we should see four sets of console logs. So my loop is running uh, no matter how big or small the array is. First, we saw the equivalent of the loop counter, the number that counts up as the loop runs, and the location of a value in the array. And now we've seen the equivalent of the number of times the loop runs with the length of the array. So we can have this piece of code, the loop, that will run uh, as many times as there are items in the array. You may have noticed that the way that the array gets formatted when we're adding items is not very good. So I can continue to add items to the array. But what happens is that they go off the screen. So if I scroll over here, then I see all my values. So next, let's fix that so that the array output is properly formatted. First, I'm going to move my output value above the loop so that I can manipulate it inside the loop. We're going to use the loop to put properly formatted values inside of my output value. So. I'm going to get rid of letters, variable here, and I'm going to create a new line after hello world. And then I'm going to, inside the loop, add to my output value. I'm going to add the current value in the array to the output, and then I'm going to give a new one. And let's save this and see it in the browser. Now when I add things to the array, I should see a nicely formatted output that doesn't go off of the screen.